This video will talk about how to speak with good projection. Uh, now, when I say projection, I'm not just saying volume. We can get volume just by screaming. Uh, that's not what we want, right? You don't want to be doing a talk like, I want to thank everyone for coming here today. This is a joyous occasion, right? When you scream, you're tightening up your throat. You can try this now, right? Put your hand on your throat and pretend to scream, ah, right? You, and you can feel everything in here get tighter. Your larynx moves up, your vocal tract shortens, you scream too much and you'll inflame the larynx. And as a matter of fact, you'll end up hoarse. This is what we call laryngitis, an inflammation of the larynx. Uh, and it can be caused by an inflammation from screaming or inflammation from nasal drainage or viral infections or just any other sort of gross stuff that's going on in there. Uh, but what happens is the vocal apparatus just becomes too inflamed to properly vibrate and make sound. So we don't want just volume. We want projection and resonance. And this starts with good breath control. We have to push a sufficient amount of air over the vocal folds. But we also really want to manipulate the resonance chambers in our body. Now, you're mostly empty space. And that's not an insult. That's just a fact. We have lots of open space in our bodies, cavities. Think of it this way. A violin sounds different from a cello, which sounds different from a bass. They're the same basic mechanism, but there are changes to the strings and to the resonance chambers. So we want to expand our resonance chambers to allow for more sound resonance, more richness, more amplification. So your chest is a cavity. It's a big cavity, but not really a good one for speech resonance and amplification because it's on the wrong side of the vocal folds. It's down here. It's not up here. Your voice is coming up and out. Your nasal cavity is there, but we really don't want too much of the sound living here. It can sound nasally. Go figure, right? But so you can manipulate your voice to really make the nasal cavity the main place for resonance. But it's not very loud and it doesn't sound very good. No, that's not what we want. Your mouth and your pharyngeal space are the spaces we want to use. So we want to try to keep these spaces open. What does that mean? Well, that means opening your mouth wide when speaking, giving the sound more room. You might even warm up before speaking with a few facial stretches, you know, less to stretch and maybe more to remind yourself that you need to open wider than you do in normal conversation. Uh, also, we can tap into the pharyngeal space. Now, the pharyngeal space is a cavity above the epiglottis and below the soft palate. And when really speaking with volume, I always felt like that my esophagus was really opening up. And that's not entirely accurate, but it's really just opening up this cavity here in your throat. So try this. You can feel this sensation. So pretend to vomit, right? You've got your hand in there and you go, uh, really? I hope you're not on a bus or around people where you're pretending to do this to think you're ill, but pretend to vomit. Uh, and you feel that opening in the back of the throat. Well, a lot of that is the pharyngeal space. And using this space gives us a little bit more area for the sound to gain resonant qualities and volume. It, really, the difference between this and this and this is really just an increase in air pressure, pushing that air out deliberately and also expanding that pharyngeal space. Now, what are we shooting for with good projection? Well, I want to fill the space with sound. So in a room, I'm thinking usually about two things. One, if there were people in the room, you know, that can they all still easily hear me? If there were 10 rows of seats past the last row of current seats, could they easily hear what I'm saying? Uh, two, can I hear a little bit of an echo when I speak? And it's, this is if I'm speaking without a microphone. Uh, can I hear my voice bouncing back off of the walls? If I can, it tells me I'm speaking with enough volume that some of that sound is hitting the wall and bouncing off and coming back to me. And also, this allows me to adapt to different room setups. If it's a big, empty, concrete room, I just want a little bit of bounce back so it's not too echoey. If it's a big room with lots of fabric dampening the sound waves, I might need to push a little bit more to hear that echo. And all of this changes if you're using a microphone. So if I'm on a microphone, I normally back off so I can still project without blowing out the speakers. Right? I normally want to be at least this far away from a mounted microphone. You notice my mic here is pretty low on my chest. And even then, I'm speaking slightly softer than I would to a room of even like you know, 30 or 50 people. So in the end, good volume and projection buys you a ton. Opening your mouth wide to allow for resonance has the added benefit of slowing you down a little bit. It just takes longer, and I'm thinking in terms of milliseconds, it just takes longer to open and close the articulatory mechanism. Activating the pharyngeal space usually lowers your pitch a little bit. Uh, ultimately, we want to do this because you're speaking to be heard. 
make it easy for the audience. There's so much you don't know in a speech situation, right? If you're standing up there speaking, what's the ambient sound in the back of the room like? Is there an air conditioner running that you're competing with that you don't even know about? Is there an audience member who's partially deaf? There's so much you don't know. You don't want to lose out to all these factors. You want to speak to be heard, so you need to speak with projection.